Our salivary gland system acts like a hidden network of pipes, constantly working behind the scenes to keep our mouths moist. But what happens if there's a clog or leak in these vital pipelines? That's where sialography comes in. So what is sialography? It is a specialized procedure that works by injecting a small amount of contrast dye into a single salivary duct. This dye shows up on radiographs, creating a detailed picture of the gland's structures using 2D or 3D imaging techniques. Today, let us explore sialography in detail with the help of a demonstration of how it is performed. Let us take the case of a patient who complains of recurrent pain and swelling under her lower left jaw that occurs during meals and subsides afterwards. This suggests a potential blockage in the duct, making sialography a good option to identify the issue. Pop quiz. Before we proceed, let us understand the common reasons why sialography is indicated and situations where it is contraindicated. Sialography becomes a valuable tool in various situations, such as to help pinpoint the location and presence of calculi in the salivary ducts. These can be either visible as radio-opaque or radiolucent structures. Another indication is to assess gland damage. When a blockage in the duct occurs, the part of the duct and gland tissue beyond the blockage can undergo destruction due to the lack of saliva flow. Sialography helps us assess the extent of this damage, which is crucial for deciding the appropriate treatment. This could range from the procedure of simply removing the stone, called lithotomy, to potentially removing the entire gland. The next indication is to detect tumors. Sialography can reveal signs of epithelial breakdown, which can occur with tumors. While sialography offers valuable insights, it is not suitable in some instances. Here are some situations where it might not be the best course of action. If the patient has a known allergy to the contrast media used during the procedure, especially iodine, sialography is contraindicated. Sialography is best avoided if a patient experiences an active infection or inflammation in the ductal system. During this time, the lining of the ducts is already compromised. Injecting the contrast medium could cause it to leak out of the ducts and into the surrounding tissue. This leads to a severe foreign body reaction and significant pain. If radiographs reveal a calculi positioned very close to the opening of the salivary duct, Sialography might not be ideal. The pressure of injecting the dye could push the stone further into the duct, causing additional problems. Moving on to the procedure, it consists of three phases. Phase 1, which is the preparatory phase. Phase 2, the filling phase. And phase 3, the emptying phase. Beginning with the preparatory phase, also known as the preliminary plane film evaluation step. This phase involves collecting detailed clinical data about the patient. This includes their name, age, chief complaint, relevant medical history, allergies, and prior radiographs if available. We also inquire about any previous use of contrast media and the type and volume used. An initial radiograph called a scout film is taken to confirm proper patient positioning. This film also helps us to check for the presence of calculi that shows up on radiographs and overlap of normal structures such as the hyoid bone which might obscure the gland being examined. With this we ensure the procedure provides the clearest possible images of the salivary gland. In our case, following a thorough review of the patient's history, I obtained an initial panoramic radiograph. This imaging test ensured there were no contraindications before proceeding with the second phase of treatment. Moving on to the filling or the injection phase. Here is how I did it for my case. The opening of the submandibular gland duct was located and dilated with a periodontal probe to widen it slightly. A lacrimal probe can also be used for this purpose. I then inserted a cannula into the duct. 
This cannula or catheter was connected to a syringe containing a contrast agent by an extension tube. In this case, a water-based iohexol contrast agent called Omnipec was used. Around 0.75 milliliters of the contrast agent was slowly injected over a few minutes until the patient felt a sense of fullness and tightness in the area around the gland. For the parotid gland, the amount of dye injected can vary between 0.75 and 1 milliliter. Following the contrast injection, I took an OPG. The radiograph revealed an abnormal widening of the submandibular gland duct in its middle section. In this area, the duct measured more than 6 millimeters wide, which is significantly larger than normal. A healthy submandibular gland duct typically measures around 3 to 4 millimeters and gradually narrows towards the end. Interestingly, the radiograph also showed a radiolucent area within the dilated portion of the duct. This radiolucent finding was a sialolith. The presence of the sialolith explained the patient's symptoms of saliva pooling, swelling, and pain during meals. The stone likely blocked the duct, preventing saliva from draining properly and causing these issues. Cyalography uses two main types of contrast agents, water-based and oil-based. Here are a few advantages and disadvantages of both. Water-based solutions are less viscous, so it is easier to inject into salivary ducts. They are easily flushed out by the salivary glands and they cause less pain and discomfort during injection. Disadvantage is that they don't create images as clear or radio-opaque as oil-based solutions. Now, although oil-based solutions provide better image clarity, they are more viscous and require more pressure to inject, making them harder to push through ducts. They cause more pain and discomfort during injection and they take longer for the body to eliminate. Ethidol is an oil-based contrast media. Now, in the third phase, which is the emptying or the evacuation phase, I gently remove the cannula from the ductal orifice. The patient was asked to suck on lemon candy to stimulate salivary flow, which causes excretion. In some cases, gently massaging the gland can also aid in expelling the contrast agent. A post-operative radiograph was taken to confirm that the contrast agent had been completely cleared from the duct. Thus, cyrography offers a minimally invasive way to examine the salivary glands and ducts. By injecting a contrast agent and taking radiographs, dentists can gain valuable insights into potential blockages, abnormalities, or malfunctions. This information is crucial for diagnosing and treating various salivary gland conditions. We leave you with a few important sialographic appearances. Feel free to take a screenshot. The normal appearance of submandibular gland, bush in winter appearance, normal anatomy of ductal system, branched leafless tree appearance, Normal ductal structure, parotid gland, tree in winter appearance. Sialadenitis, a focal collection of contrast media within the gland. Sialodochitis, sausage link appearance. Jogren syndrome, branchless fruit laden tree appearance, or cherry blossom, or snowstorm appearance. With this, we come to the end of this session. We hope you had fun learning with us. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.